All right, so if we pop over here and I clear, clear all data. All right. Um, cart going up and down. Okay, looks like that. And then if we embiggen this velocity versus time graph, embiggen. And let me stretch it out a little bit too. We don't need this whole thing. Really helpful things. Point five. All right. So where on here is the thing? This is. I'm going to farm this over to um, one note. P six. Oh boy. And. I'm going to give you a few points in time here, okay? So A, B, C, D, E. Okay, so this is cart on incline. Okay? When is it, what is the interval here where it's going up the ramp? What is the interval here where it's going down the ramp? So from when to, like, and I guess what I'm really fishing for is like, we're only interested in this thing after it leaves my hand until it returns to my hand, okay? So maybe the better question is, where is the point on here that it leaves my hand? Where is the point on here that it returns to my hand? Run that by your neighbor really quick. Okay. And I'm going to ask you over here. So the question on the pair deck is, when does it leave my hand? Oh, I could have made this multi-choice. I could have got a histogram out of it. That'd be cool. Oh, why am I not showing you the graph? That'd be easier, wouldn't it? There we go. All right. When does it leave my hand? Put a little thought into that. Like, what's the indication that that is the point at which it's left my hand? So let's see what the room thinks right now. Point A. Point B because it's the beginning of the linear line that represents the increase in velocity. Oh, man, increase in velocity. It leaves the hand at point B because it's where the velocity chain. B is when it leaves your hand. D is when it returns. Point A after the velocity curve begins increasing in the negative direction before this point's velocity is zero. B, the cart reaches its local maximum speed the moment it left Harding's hand. Leaves hand at B, leaves hand at B, hits at D. Leaves it A, leaves it. So I guess, yeah, that's kind of the, the question is, what role does my hand play here? Okay. This is like I hit collect. So what role does my hand play here? Is the velocity zero until it leaves my hand? Why or why not? Run that by your neighbor. Talk to your neighbor. Talk to your neighbor. And the velocity is zero and then it and then it increases and then like decreases right after it bumps and then decreases while it's coming up and then it starts increasing. So let me ask you a slightly different question. What is happening from A to B? What is happening from A to B? So pair deck that bro. What's happening from A to B? Well, isn't the intuition when it's
You people spell weird. Nobody? I thought you people were my people. No. All right, so I've got uh, from A to B, the card is being pushed. It exits being at rest and starts going in motion. The card is moving with your head. Your hand accelerated the cart. A to B is when the hand is push, push, push. How do you say that? Pushing the cart. Going up, getting pushed. Hand is slowing down the cart. A to B is while your hand is in the process of pushing. Damn, who is that? I did it after you said it. Yeah. Okay. Harding was holding the cart and pushing it. Okay. Velocity is decreasing as it goes up the ramp. From A to B, Harding is touching the cart and pushing it. That's why the cart is able to accelerate in the negative direction. After B, the cart immediately slows down. Okay. So, like, right, like, at A, velocity is zero. It acquires the velocity as I push it, okay? And I'm pushing it towards the detector. So that's why all of a sudden it's got a big negative velocity. As soon as I let go, it's going to start slowing down, okay? It's slowing down as it goes up the ramp. Highest point in the motion is at C. This area is all negative here, yeah? So the highest point in the motion is C. That's where the velocity is zero at an instant here at the top of the incline. And beyond that, it's... Uh, C to D is traveling back down the ramp, right? D is when it hits my hand. So when you look at the segments on this graph, B to C and C to D, like what do you notice here? Pretty constant, right? Pretty constant acceleration, okay? And the reason for that. Because okay. it's frictionless, okay? So here's what I'd like you to think about here is um, draw the free body diagram and the force addition. It says block here. Um, draw the free body diagram and the force addition diagram for the block going up the – oh, my gosh. Is that yeah. – can you see the bottom of the slide on your screen? Yeah, you can. Okay. So all right. So draw a free body diagram over here. Uh, force addition diagram is what we used to call it, HPD cat lard. Okay. Uh, what does that look like for the cart going up the incline? Oh, man. And yeah, be mindful of the FU in your uh, force addition diagram. You can use like a different color. You have the ability to change the, the weight of the arrows. Some of you are boldly trying to draw an outline of an arrow with a Chromebook keypad. That's, that's tough, my friends. Yeah, what I do. This is after it's left my hand. Yeah, so again, sorry, I didn't specify. We're drawing it for the cart while it's going up the ramp after it's left my hand.
braid your arrows look like lines. Emily Oldman, same beef. Just put arrow tips on. You don't have to erase them. Okay, okay. Hmm. Dang it. I hate it when I have good differences and then they go away. Stop thinking, people. Damn it. Oh, there goes another one. <sighs> Boo. Okay, we can do that, and we can do, yeah. But we're all from different periods, so and here we called it cat, which is actually a much better name than lard. I mean, there are a lot of bad things to name it. But, well, what? You voted for it. Do you know how close I came to having to refer to acceleration as slopey slope slope in uh, in regular physics yesterday? Like we had a vote between acceleration and slopey slope slope, and like it was really tight. It's like, oh God, no! I'm gonna edit everything. I mean, I want to do the Okay, fair enough. All right, oh, man. Damn it! Stop fixing your. Th Will you people stop thinking about your thinking? There's no place for that in physics. Uh, now I don't have anybody saying that. Uh, I don't even know you people. All right. I'm going to lock it. No. Damn it. Well, I still have one thing to talk about. Oh, I don't want another question. I want to show it. Show responses. There we go. All right. So I'm looking at this and this right now, okay? And I had – initially, I had some great examples where there was also this or maybe that. Why did those go away, people that got rid of those, which is a lot of you? There's no pen. There's no friction. And also, I don't want to include the FU in my free body diagram. So – these two seem to be in pretty good agreement on all but one thing. So please talk about that one thing with your neighbor because this is pretty split around the room right now. <laughs> so keep in mind, my friends, they, that motion. But is it going this way? Motion is which way here? We both have it. Motion and this part of it's going up the ramp. It's going up the ramp. Well, I think. And think about what is happening to its velocity as it's going up the ramp. That'll tell you about the direction of your acceleration relative to the direction of your motion. And then your FU has to agree with that, right? So I'm going to give it back to you here and make changes that you perceive necessary. The motion is directed up the incline, and this thing's getting slower. So what does that tell you about the acceleration? Because that's what tells you about the FU. All right. Um, it's not quite a consensus, but... It looks like the, the down the ramps have it right now, okay? And that's, again, that's because motion is up the ramp, so that means that the acceleration has to be down the ramp. As you and acceleration are going to point the same way. What's up? Your thing won't what? I don't know what to tell you. All right. <coughs> Excuse me. That's for the block going up the ramp. The cart going up the ramp, sorry. How about for the cart during the part of the motion where it's going down the ramp? <coughs> Good gosh.
So let's let's just look at this globally, because we got a coin toss again. So talk to your neighbor about it. What is different about this situation? Here's the graph, my friends. It's just physics, bro. This is this is the window of time. Like we talked about this already. Think about what's true about the acceleration here. Okay. And think about what I just said about acceleration in the direction of the FU. So now if we look at we're all playing ball yet. I got seven FUs pointing down the incline. I got one, two, three. Wait, what? A lot of people just change their FU. Why just change your FU direction? How does your free body diagram compare to what you had for the car going up the ramp? It's the same, isn't it? Right? There's no friction. You've just got smooch, push, and gravity. So if your free body diagram is the same for both parts of the motion, then your uh, force addition diagram, your HPD cat lard, should be the same as well, including the direction of the FU. The FU is pointing the same way from the instant the cart leaves my hand until it gets back to my hand. The FU is pointing the same way because it's only smoosh, push, and gravity, and the supporting evidence for that claim is the acceleration is the same car going up the ramp and car going down the ramp, okay? So it's the same free body diagram. It's the same force addition diagram for both parts. Now, let's go back. Well, we're on the graph, right? Let me control L this business. Remember what this looks like. Okay, actually, I should probably just go ahead and copy and paste this over. Ah, come on. The boop. I'm going to drop this in on here. Where are you going? There we go. All right, so this is the cart. All right. And I'm going to look at something completely different. Let's look at, instead of the fancy cart, I'm going to use this block of wood, okay? I'll turn the lights on so you can see what the heck's happening. So here's a block of wood going up and down the incline. Just watch it here first. Okay, so you want to watch that again? Okay. If I graph it,
it looks like this blue graph here. I gotta extend this back out. What the heck is going on? Okay, so can I get rid of? I want to hide the hide the earlier run. Is that a thing? Ah, there we go. Okay. Look at that acceleration versus time graph. What's going on there? Okay. So if we think about those same points in the motion again. Um, if I grab this and copy it over. And I ask you the same questions again. Let's think about what's happening. Let's go blue, blue, blue. Thanks, no. Thanks, drying out. Blue. A, B, C. D, E, all right? So A, B, C, D, E, when does it leave my hand here? Or when is the push? Maybe I should ask it that way, right? Let's go back to this, freeze you, okay. All right, new question, boom. When's the push? Okay. Friends are saying push is at B, push is at B, point A where there's a change of velocity, push is still at B, from A to B, between A and B, Harding is pushing, it's going right this time, thank you, brother. Okay. It's from A to B. It's the same as the last graph, right? Um, just like then, I'm pushing from A to B. As soon as my hand leaves contact with it, its velocity starts to go to zero. It starts to slow down. Okay, so we have this acceleration happening from B to C. Okay, it's pretty linear, yeah? C is the highest point on the ramp. Its velocity is zero. After that, it's going to be going back down the ramp. We have acceleration pretty constant from C to D. What is different about this situation compared to the cart? Okay, so let me throw that at you. New question. Like compare and contrast this graph... I want this thing, right? Compare and contrast that graph to the one above it, to the cart graph. Block graph, cart, cart graph. What, why the difference? What are folks saying? Folks are saying the acceleration decreases midway through the motion. This is because friction is higher when the block goes up. Then, oop, changing the mind. It takes longer for the block of wood to change velocities. There's friction, whereas the cart was frictionless. Block slows down much faster and speeds up much slower because the force of friction opposes the block. Block has friction, but the cart doesn't. Okay, so there's friction going on here, yeah? So... <clears throat> so let me back this up and now 
I'm going to re-ask this question, but I want you to think about the block, the block, after it leaves my hand, the block, what does the diagram look like for the block? Right? This one's kind of mind blowing. Data kids. Come on, Kyle. Such a good babysitter. Think about the direction of motion here. Cart's going up the incline. Motion's going like that. Think about what's happening to its motion as it goes up the incline. All right, so let's take a peek at what this looks like. Which direction should that friction be? Which direction should that FU be? Okay, it's going up the hill, but it's slowing down. That's telling you that the acceleration and therefore the FU is pointing opposite of the motion. Think about what the friction is doing to the FU here compared to if there was no friction. And does that help you understand why when you look at the graph, look at how much steeper this is for the block than it was for the car. Okay, that's a lot, that's almost twice as steep. Is that how math works? Okay, compared to the right one. Why is that the case? Okay, so this is kind of related to your drawing into the graph. Why do we see a bigger, why do we see a steeper slope, I guess is what I'm trying to ask you. Why is this steeper for the block than it is for Keep in mind, my hand is not touching it after this local minimum for math fans. Uh, I would say the greatest speed 
if a physicist is not there in the room. My hand's not touching it after that red dot. Why is that graph steeper? Uh, Come on, William, no spoilers. Leave me room to ask that question next. All right, so let's see what folks are saying. Harding was pushing the block harder for it to overcome the static friction threshold. Force of friction increases the FU when the block goes up, since friction is in the opposite direction when the, ah, we don't want to talk about that yet. The second graph, because there is another force added, friction, which decreases the change in velocity. I think when I look at this graph, I think there's a greater change in velocity for blue than there is for red. That change in velocity for red is stretched out over a longer time period. For blue, it's a greater change and it happens in less time. It's greater acceleration. And it's because if you go back and look at our diagrams here, think about what the – oh, this is not the droids I'm looking for. No, this is a block going up. If you've got friction, if you look at this one here, maybe if I can pick on a single one. Ah, bugger, just scroll. There we go. Even though that arrow doesn't look like a line, if friction's pointing down the ramp, look at what happens. If you had no friction, your FU would just go from my thumb to my finger. But because you have this friction, it's going to make that FU bigger. This is when the block is going up the ramp. This is why we see a bigger acceleration here. Now I want to take you to the block going down the ramp. So that's going to be after what we were calling point C on this graph. So after point C, the block's going down the ramp. Um, so let's, let's revisit... That scenario. Come on, man. Re ask the same question. Why are you not playing nice? Ooh. There we go. Now is it working? So on here, block going down the end. So motion down the ramp. The kids. And there should be an understanding within your diagram here of why is there such a drastic difference? What does your diagram say about this huge difference between the acceleration here? The acceleration here. Why is the acceleration so much less now? What does your diagram tell us about that? Oh. 
Let's see what our friends have to say about that. All right. So almost universally, you can see it now. The friction is now pointing up the ramp. The block is going down the ramp. The friction is pointing up the ramp in most cases. And if you do that, if you put that friction up the ramp, look at what that does to the size of the FU. Okay. Look at what that does to the size of the FU. It makes it much smaller. So now I've got a much smaller FU. Here you had a rather large FU divided by the mass. That's going to be a pretty big acceleration. For this part, you've got a smaller FU divided by that same mass. That's going to give a significantly smaller acceleration. That's what's happening. Okay? So, ooh, there was some important physics that we needed to double check on there. So, I meant to give you a little more time for work, but I forgot that. Hopefully that will help make more conceptual sense of what's going on in the first problem. Okay? Uh, I'll shut up now. If you got specific questions, let me know, and I can just kind of mill around and try to be helpful. I'll come to you, Sean. I'm just going to shut this off quick.